Hello YouTube. Today we'll be looking at this uh, television. It's a uh, Grundig T665. Definitely needs some uh, attention. Uh, this thing has fallen. This thing is loose as fuck. It's made in Belgium, of all places. I cannot find any schematics or anything, so makes it more interesting, I guess. I've been told it still works, but it's been sitting for a long time, so I don't quite believe it. And we'll take a look inside before we plug it in. Six screws later, we're presented with this. You don't have to take out the screws all the way, you just loosen them a little bit. And on the bottom, this back plate is held by these things. I thought there's no strain relief, but apparently we've got this. This thing fell out, might come from here. If I'm not mistaken, if we take these screws out, this thing is pretty over-engineered. It even has some metal tabs to stop it from ripping the cables out. That does mean the board is stuck like this, which is... There's a bag taped to the side here. There's little... Tiny plastic mushrooms in there. And this little spring seems to have rusted away. You do need these tubes to be grounded. Definitely a good thing. We're taking a look in here before we plug it in. This this is kind of strange. I don't know why there's a little rubber washer on this. We have vacuum tubes and at least one transistor. A really interesting contraption. I loosened this before. You can lift this up and in there. And ta da! The relay in here. By the looks of it. Yep. This is rather interesting. Alright, we got this open. One simple trick your screw salesman doesn't want you to know. Just stick the screw back here. And you try to put it back together, you'll find it. Why is this so long? Oh, I think I figured out what for this is. This is supposed to be all the way the other side, over here. Make sure this metal case doesn't chew this cable up. Someone messed up. So I finally figured out why we got a bag of tiny mushrooms. It's for this thing, which I think activates a bunch of switches under this plastic. Look at this. There's a test points, but they're what looks like just washers that's been that have been soldered on. So as far as I can tell, there's only one paper and wax capacitor in here. We're gonna replace that, and perhaps to deal with the electrolytics for now, we're just gonna turn it on on a variable power supply. If it works, I think we should replace all of the electrolytics so that it. It remains working for a long time. Voila, it's in there. I almost forgot to replace this spring. This is a isolation transformer and a variable voltage isolation transformer. Goes into two light bulbs in series. You only need one, but I have this thing sitting around already. I use this to discharge capacitors. These have to be incandescent bulbs. This one's a halogen. I think they're fine too. And this one is like uh, only 40 watts. This one is 70, no, a 105 watt halogen. Anyway, in series with the plug. And then we'll slowly turn up the voltage. Um, reform the electrolytic capacitors in the process, hopefully. So, let's go. Um, I don't know whether the TV is on. don't think it was. 
slowly go up a little bit. And we just let it sit. Actually, I should put the meter in and see, see how much current it's going. Like we're up to 100 volts now. Nothing shows. The thing in the middle of the screen right now is the power switch. Now it's on. But I made it on. It's not... It doesn't happen just if you press the switch. See, see now it's off. The contacts have moved. I can press all I want. They don't move. Yeah. There we go. That's how they're supposed to move. So, yeah. Let's try it again. And I see light from the television. And I know why that is. Because I left my headlamp in there. 32 milliamps. That's a something. Everything looks alright. And I know why it's set. 32 milliamps. So yeah, let's let this be for a while. See if this lamp dims. I'm swapping this out. So a 70 watt lamp. Sort of suspecting that a resistive divider or like the tube filaments might be taking up most of the current. Yeah, let's leave it at this and I'll come back in a little while. Also, you definitely shouldn't leave something like this unattended. Don't leave your cat in if something like this is out. Yeah, quite some time passed, nothing's happening, so this could be a terrible idea. I think we have to give it time yet again. I can hear something coming from there. I can't really tell exactly where it comes from. I figure maybe we should take out some of the tubes. Let's take one of them out. And see if that changes things. Well, it appears to take more current now. That's something different. We get the same sound from the back. Okay, since we weren't getting anywhere, we have only one lamp left. Oh, now that one is lighting up already. And this is the 100 watt one. Yeah. That's been on. Oh no, <laughs> that's been on DC all along. That explains a lot actually. This is not 2 amps though. Yes. We have 2 meters. What the hell is up with this meter? Oh, duh. Is that what I think it is? Well, those helis are trying. I don't think we're giving it quite enough voltage to really activate them. Is that 150 volts. I'm sure he's trying to do something. Oh yeah. Oh man, I'm stupid. Forgot all about the switch not working thing. These don't feel warm at all. That is good news. I think I'm gonna go hide right ahead. And go straight with that light bulb, see what it gives. Turn up the voltage slowly though. Yeah, do not. There is a fuse.
and the uh, scary sounds. Oh, that's not a good sound. I have to admit, I'm slightly terrified. I feel like that was the speaker. Yeah, those sound like speaker sounds. What are these knobs? Control hell. Oh. Oh, that's the speaker also. Yeah, and it has a little more current in some settings. Alright. The picture tube is, uh, the filament is glowing though. This is nice, nice looking. And what's that? What's going on? Suddenly so load, and I don't see a glowing light in that rectifier tube. Oh, the other big tube nearby. Is that the volume? No. Is there a volume knob on this thing? Yes. Turn it off for now and think what is the plan. Oh yeah, I want to see those relays do that thing. Wow. Yes, they're for the different channels. Oh, oh, oh. Please be giving picture. Okay, investigating off camera, I found out this tube here definitely has its filament lit. You can see it. I have the feeling I, it got brighter after the. Um, He's eating the tube. Uh, and also, I took that one out, which is most definitely some kind of rectifier tube, which most definitely has a filament, um, but I cannot see it lighting up. And I'm wondering if the filament is driven by this transformer and it's simply not getting any voltage because. Maybe the transformer is broken, or maybe the whole circuit is not oscillating. Um, we'll have to investigate. DT602. Or 802? 802, yeah. So, yeah, I should check the filament on that. So, I couldn't resist to push that golden trim back into place. Uh, interestingly, it's too short. So, the filament still looks to be alive. It just strains. Why there is no getter? Is this one of these strange tubes that is filled with a gas instead of a... It does say vacuum rectifier. Oh, and there is a picture. There's no getter to be seen either. I did notice the cap is loose. We should glue that before it breaks off. So we hook it to a power supply. And 
This is what we're supposed to see. I put some super glue. Don't know if it's the best choice of glue, but uh, it's like liquid enough to get in there. Also have epoxy, but it's rather syrupy stuff. Okay, so on closer inspection, it looks like this blue wire, which I assume is for the filament. Three wires and three connections on the bottom of this tube. It just loops around the transformer core. I guess next thing to do is check is the transformer okay at all. Apparently if we rotate this socket we can get it out. I needed a long ass screwdriver to go like this. Just like this was too diagonal, there's a little slot in there on the screwdriver. It was already chewed up so someone's been in there. Even this rubber thing I mentioned before suggests someone's been in there before. Let's see if we can have a look inside. Ooh. After taking uh, this plastic off, we can see not all of the holes are populated. A whole bunch of them are in parallel on the tube itself. Okay, so the only two wires coming out of this thing are this one, which goes here. I think, I think this connects to that. Anyway, there's like 100 something ohm between these two, which is, yeah, yeah, doesn't surprise me, so that should be alright. There's also a whole lot of other stuff going on on the other side of the transformer core. Anyway, so we have a cheap and cheerful differential probe. Um, it's just telling me the voltage is too high, I think, with the blinking. And I've got... Ooh, what's that blue light? I haven't seen that before. Ooh, ooh, this is new. So maybe we had a bad contact somewhere there. I did spray some contact cleaner in there. Oh, the oscilloscope is making it oscillate because of capacitance. Uh, oh, it's gone. Huh. Interesting. Uh, I might not have explained. We got the differential probe between the chassis and the little anode cap, I think. I always mix up anodes and cathodes. Um, in hopes of seeing if uh, the circuit was actually oscillating. And apparently not oscillating was the problem because when I saw stuff on here, I saw stuff on the TV. And it was all happy until it stopped again. So why is it so? It's Actually, I don't need a differential probe since this is on a on a vehicle, but uh, uh, on an insulation transformer. However, um, the other scope probes I have, the passive ones, they're not rated for very high voltages. So could be this tube is just going out, which would be sad, but easy to fix. Okay, that's wonderful news anyway. That means the CRT is working, which means this thing is probably worth restoring. Hello. I, I don't know if anyone buys these things if you sell them. Yeah. Might keep it, it's fucking cool. Oh yeah, 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 the, the switch doesn't work. Uh oh, I saw sparks. 
again. That was interesting. Huh. I think those fuse holders are dirty as fuck. It'd be silly if that's what causes the problems. I'd be surprised. Oh, this light does blink only in some circumstances. Maybe it is telling me it's like upset or something. So someone more experienced than I pointed out Grundig stands for Gerät richtig umfangreich nachlöten, dann ist gut. Which means um, resolder the whole device properly, then it is good. Um, that reminded me, um, I have not checked for any dry solder joints in the thing, which is a real possibility, especially might explain an intermittent issue like we were having. Don't know how well this comes across on video, but yeah, not all of these are very bad, but some of them definitely don't look good. Like. This is rather suspicious, and you see it's dull like that, and there's like a little circle around the pin. I would suspect this one still makes good contact, given it's properly flowed on the end of the pin there, but yeah, I'll be looking for the rest of the solder joints and redoing them. So, I was spraying some contact cleaner in the sockets for these tubes also and this one definitely seen better days the brown stuff on the glass is on the inside like what the hedge I think it's on the inside anyway doesn't appear to be coming off and as you can see hopefully see these letters are like on top of it so yeah okay um i've since learned that maybe this is not the only problem we have since the horizontal oscillator which drives this whole thing should be working without this tube if i don't misunderstand i accidentally popped this one all the way off which not a big deal but uh interestingly there's a resistor in there i didn't know now I know. So that was a lot easier than I expected. We simply had to take out this screw and similar one down here. It's on this rather interesting assembly. They screw into brackets. In the... Yep, yep, now you can see it. Um, the speaker has seen better days and now it's uh, all stuck because of cables and I found this tiny little thing another one of those these plastic things I'll throw this here okay approximately one eternity later I've acquired a replacement PL500 tube, I've acquired a schematic, I've gotten the tripod out, I've learned a lot, I've learned from the schematic, the horizontal oscillator is actually somewhere here, and drives this tube, which drives the flyback, so we can take this out and see if the oscillator still runs, it should run without this tube in place, so we can figure that out first, and then go on and replace the tube, after we check that the oscillator works, otherwise we might fry the new tube. I've also learned it's a really terrible idea to probe the plate of this tube, because there's a really high voltage on there, which could destroy my probe. Uh, but first we'll take a look at this thing, take it out. I've already loosened the connectors, but I still need to desolder stuff.
I found this inside the television, which is the only part we were missing, as far as I know. This is the pointer for this thing. We can see where it belongs from the red little stripes. This is the schematic, which was kindly uploaded by freeservicemanuals.info when I requested it. Thank you very much. This is the horizontal output tube, which I suspect is dead. And this is the horizontal oscillator circuit. It connects to the output tube by C413 and R420. We will find one of these and probe it so that we know if the oscillator is running. Uh, perhaps with, without this tube installed. R420 is a small one right down in there. And C413 is this one here. So we will probe it here. That seems like the easiest way. Okay, the way we go about this is we clip the ground onto the chassis, which uh, since I'm using a differential probe, I can get away with that. If you're not, you must use an isolation transformer, which I also am, but uh, still uh, you should take care, because the chassis has about a 50-50 shot of being live. We kind of have polarized plugs in Euro, but we also don't, and it, it's still a gamble. And if you don't ground the oscilloscope, you can go also get away with it, but it's rather dangerous. So, just now, yeah. Maybe actually, I should probe on the other side. Okay, something shorted over there. I forgot to reconnect all these. Let's get to it. This one only looks to go one place. Get these. No, they only go one place. Nice. Good thing I noticed because this is the mains. And I think I have to look at my photos for this. Turning the TV on, but I'm not giving it any voltage yet. 
Whoa. <laughs> okay, yeah. I wonder if this tube being gone means that none of the tubes are lighting up because the filaments are in series. We'll have to figure out another way. Tube is back in there. Let's see what happens. Nothing, because the TV is off. It does take quite a bit more current now. Okay, seems to be warming up. I'm turning the volume up a bit. I didn't connect the front speaker yet. Aha! Uh -huh. I think that oscillator is doing something. There's a lot of noise on it. 50 hertz. But, uh, maybe I destroyed the probe while trying stuff. It is oscillating. So, that's the good news. So, go struggle. Maybe I. Maybe my hand clip is not very good. Don't think I dare to touch it right now. It is oscillating. I should check out if that probe is okay, <laughs> and we will take a look about replacing that tube first. I have a spare now, so let's see. I have to discharge it first so that I don't get zapped. Here is the old one. See all the brown crap. It's still warm. Yeah, the logo rubbed off because I'm a baboon. Here's the new one, nice and shiny, no shit stains inside, very good, might give those pins a clean. There we are, let me wait, the thing has to warm up. Higher current than before. That's interesting. And what do we have? We have a picture. Very nice. This is not 100% that I hope to be seeing. I hope to be seeing snow. Not simply white. This is better than before. So there is that, but it, it's eating too much current. Supposed to be only Taking 180 watts takes like a lot more. Whoa! Yeah, starts up quite easy. Even at like 200 volts. Whoa! That's quite interesting. Things not totally right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Let's find out what's going wrong. Yeah, click, click, click. Um, what could be the problem? Let's take this off. Oh yeah, this explains why we're getting noise. 
the clip fell off and the capacitor swarm. Oh. Huh. So something's not right. Could be why the previous tube got fried. It's pretty hot down there. Should be pretty hot down there. But uh, yeah, something's obviously not totally right. All right, turn the done again. Um, and it starts, it goes up to like one and a half amp or something like that, and then it just settles down. So nothing is terribly, terribly wrong. But we're not seeing snow as we would expect. We do have both horizontal and vertical deflection. It's nice. Uh, stay stable at around 100, uh, 1 amp. Give it a bit more voltage, maybe a bit more. And give it 220. Actually, that might be why we're not getting reception. This is more promising. This is very promising, actually. So yeah, I should check, I really don't want to have that YouTube start red plating or something like that, so I shouldn't do this too too long without taking a look at the schematic again and checking everything. UHF UHF receiver seems to not be doing so much but there is this Chunk, chunk. At least no red plating or anything crazy like that. Like, let, let's turn it off and go take a look what we can check. Maybe we should give it a, a signal. So what I'm concerned with is the current through the horizontal output tube, which is something that I've heard I should check, but um, I have no clue what to do. I don't know how much should it be and if it's not right what the hell should i adjust it occurred to me we can check the grid voltage on the output tube it should be like minus 40 volts get the proper ground this time should get this rid of the noise should be careful because i haven't discharged this okay so we are gonna check the other side of that capacitor because if that one is leaky, that might explain everything. And I think we'll also next maybe try to give it a signal. If the horizontal frequency is not right, we will know it also. There we go. So we have about three divisions done. 
also want the frequency to be correct. And this looks quite good. So yeah. yeah, you have that. Let's go to the proper 220 volts. Tune is not happy yet. But yes, we have this. Three times five hundred is one fifty minus one fifty. That doesn't sound right. I should look at the schematic again and think. So my brain wasn't working so much earlier. Um, we were supposed to see minus forty volts, and we saw point one with the uh, uh, point three minus point three volts with the. Uh, 500 times probe, so, oh yeah, shit, that is 0.3 times, oh. holy shit, my brain is not working, <laughs> never mind, this is not going into the video, I think, so yeah, we measured this, and it's about 125 volt peak to peak, which goes to the bias for this tube, which is, supposed to be minus 40 volts um, uh, yeah that like looked about right uh, uh, looking at this I suspect this is a bias adjustment for this tube so that is interesting uh, cannot imagine what else it is yeah, the bias comes from this. This is supposed to be minus 40 volts. It was almost 150 volts, so 125 sounds realistic. Mm. Yeah. R424 is one down in there. So let's see if that actually adjusts the bias like I think it does. I've turned the oscilloscope and the power supply around. This does not seem to change the bias. So what the hell did we do? Uh, it does affect the current we are telling. That's... Oh wait, maybe it does adjust the bias. Just a little bit. Turning it up gives us more current. This may have been a stupid move because I'm not exactly sure what that adjustment does. I do know approximately where it was, so there's that. Yeah. I'm kind of expecting most of those potential meters to be pretty gone right now. We do have a picture, yes. I made a cheap as extension cord for the TV cable so we can test if the horizontal frequency is alright. I might not directly connect it because I don't really trust this thing to be isolated. I haven't looked at the schematic. Probably it is, but yeah, we have capacitors to isolate it. So yeah, 
Let's play about with that. Maybe it is. I see sparks in the heli, which probably aren't visible on camera. something. This probably doesn't do shit. It's alright. But we have picture. Oh, not bad at all. Nederland, misschien een paar buien. Dan mag ze maar hier. Verwekkende nieuws kan u nu meepikken in deze herhaling van het Laatavondjournaal. Het journaal laat met goede wachters. Wat is dit? something oh yeah I want to see is it eating less current if it's receiving I doubt it now I want to know what the hell controls that relay and why Same, same. This is a lot though. What's this an old television? Over the next probably less than 20. We will get there eventually. I think I saw a picture. In Duitsland heeft de rechtsradicale partij AFD de deelstaatverkiezingen gewonnen in Brandenburg en Sachsen. Volgens de exit polls gaat AFD er in beide oostelijke staten fors op vooruit. This is. Huh? It's a something. So, this is where I got sidetracked for approximately two years. 
Um, I intend to continue, but analog TV is off the air, so I have to get some converter box or something. And um, if I am not publishing this video now, it's never gonna happen, so thank you for watching and goodbye!